Hello and welcome to another Spirit of Nature art video tutorial and part three of the Botanical Journal. Today we're focusing on the right hand kind of internal flap uh, of the folio. So we are going to be looking at what we can do to fill this gap here. So I've got some more of the book pages that uh, came um, from the original book that was the inspiration for this. Um, and I want to create like a little kind of faux kind of like envelope pocket. I want that header there to be in the center. So I'm just doing a little bit of measuring just to get the width that I want um, of those pages so that that header just sits right at the top middle. So I've given them, I've trimmed them down so that they fit in that spot there. So you can see what I mean. And now what I want to do is create a slightly bigger piece of paper that I'm going to use then to fold and create this little envelope. So just placing that piece of paper on the top and making some marks and trimming this one so that it's just that little bit bigger than the other one. And you'll see why in just a moment. So you see it's bigger at the sides and also at the bottom. And where I've made those little marks, I'm just going to fold those pieces of paper over along those marks so that once I've folded these along, this piece will now be the same size as the other piece. And I'll be using these little flaps here to stick the other piece too. So we're just creating a little pocket. This paper's way too fragile to score, so it's easier just to, to fold. So look, these two pieces are now the same size. I can stick that on there. But I want to create a little window in there. So I want it to be like, you know, a little envelope. So I've got this little bit of card left over, another little off cut. So I'm just marking the size that I want that window to be. I'm just using this piece of card really as a, a bit of a, a template to draw around. So I'm just trimming it down to the size I want that window to be. And I'm rounding my corners because I want this little window to have round edges. And I'm just placing it on that top piece. And I'm just gonna draw around it with my pencil. So that's all I needed that bit of card for really. I could have just freehand drawn it or used my ruler, but I wanted that kind of rounded edges. And I also knew I had that bit of card right next to me that was almost the perfect size. So now I want to cut that piece out. So a really easy way to do that is to fold that piece of paper in half and then take my scissors to it. So I can now cut that central piece out. There we go. So now I have a lovely little window in the front of that pocket. What I'm going to do now before I sort of stick everything together is do some of the distress ink on it just because it's going to be easier before I stick everything together because also I want to be able to distress that background there so that bit will peek through that window when there isn't anything inside that pocket so just adding a little bit of ink just to start to get that aged look coming already. So it's much easier, as you can see now, I'm inking that inside of that window. There's no way I'll be able to do that once I have put um, everything together. So this is the point to do the inking. And I didn't want a clear um, kind of bit in that window. I wanted something that was a little bit frosted. So I'm just using a piece of tissue, um, a bit of tracing paper, just holding it up to uh, trim around and get the right size. So it feels a little bit more like a, an envelope. And now just adding a really small bead of glue around the edge of that window. I don't want it all seeping in when I place the tracing paper on. So I'm just placing it really gently. And now you can see how that top piece will attach to that bottom panel there. So I'm just putting again a really small bead of glue along those little flaps that I folded in. And now I'm gluing that top panel in. And there we have our little envelope pocket. Simple. So now I'm just gonna do a little bit more distressing. So bringing that ink in now, 
uh, and uh, really kind of starting to help it fit in with the rest of the folio. And that's where it is going to go. I'm just going to round that bottom corner. Sorry, I'm just doing that off screen there. Just rounding that bottom corner so it fits that flap really well. And now I want to create a little pocket on the front of that flap. And I really like the way the, um, the, the kind of cut off bit of that spine of that reinforced folio has got those lines on. So I'm just kind of marking that up so that I can get the right width. And I'm just going to chop a bit off one of those kind of excess bits I had left over. I'm not going to use the shiny side, I'm using the matte side. But I like, I wanted to keep the bit where the lines were because they're raised and so the ink will kind of show really nicely on that. So I'm just trimming this down to size to fit the bottom of that little envelope pocket there, rounding those bottom corners so it fits with everything else. And I'm just gonna, I'm just finding that halfway point uh, along the length of the, the pocket there so I can add a little thumb notch. So my little card will go in and out and inking. So I'm starting off with the tea dye and I'm doing kind of going all over with this because like I said, I really want those lines to stand out. So going now in with the vintage photo. So I'm starting off edging it, but then I'm going to bring that vintage photo across the whole pocket. So you can see how those lines now really start to stand out. And then just going back with the blending a sponge that had the tea dye on just to kind of blend that all together and then a real small amount of ground espresso really to kind of pop the the edges i'm just sprinkling a little bit of water on so the distress oxide will do its magic and just dabbing that off with a little bit of towel you can see that kind of age look that starts to come from that giving that a second go and I am doing my little smoosh here with the uh, bundle stage. So that's the Distress Ink bundle stage. Just put onto a little bit of um, acetate and squirt it with water before I dab it on. And now just decorating it. This is a little washi sticker, I think from 49 and Market. Sticking that on and just softening, the, softening that into the background with a bit of the tea dye oxide. And then I think I've got a mix of some stamps here from the Tim Holtz Field Notes set. And I think this is one of the little uh, labels from Tracy Fox. I'm just adding a little bit of decoration to this pocket before I put it in. This is the easiest time to do it. Once it's in place, it's a bit more difficult to get the decorating done. Especially as I want some of the stamps to come off the edge. I wanted that little sticker to come off the edge. So that is now stuck on the bottom of that pocket. And you can see what I want is two little tuck spots, that tuck spot there, but also the one at the side. So I might as well use that piece of card. This is the piece that I cut out for the window template. That's gonna be my little uh, journal card to go in that little pocket at the bottom. So I'm just covering it with a bit of that book page, rounding the corners. And then getting my oxide out. So starting off with tea dye always, just to, just to kind of enhance that aged look. I know these pages are already old, but it just enhances it even more. Now coming in with the vintage photo, and here I'm doing the smooshing, so I'm adding some of that tea dye to my bit of acetate, squirting with water, and then dabbing it on and letting that dry before I go back in and do the same with the bundled sage. So this is what I've done all through the project. So I will continue to do this all through the project because everything starts to come together then when you do that. So bringing in some more of those field note stamps, noticing I'm stamping off the page so you're not seeing the entire stamp. I think on these smaller things that works really well too. And that's going to pop in there like that. But I just want to add a little tab at the top to make it easier to pull it in and out. So just using my steel ruler to help me fold that in half before it too gets the distress ink treatment. And 
and another little stamp. I like the little number stamps from the Tim Holtz set, so just stamping those onto the tab there, give it a little bit more character. Before I stick that in place, just edging around it first. That piece of card just felt really kind of too new. It felt really bright in comparison to everything else. So uh, just giving it a little bit of the, uh, the vintage photo and the um, tea dye actually further in uh, to that piece of card. And then, yep, just adhering that little tab so it fits in like that. So now I want to put something inside that pocket. So another bit of offcut here. I found a bit that had a little bit of tab left over, which is great because I thought that tab can stick out the top of the pocket so it's easier to pull it in and out. So I'm just, um, just lining it up so that I can get my measurements. I want it to be a bit smaller than that pocket so it goes in and out nice and easily, like so. I really like that little tab sticking out the top. I hadn't thought, I hadn't done that on purpose. It was only because the uh, piece of card just happened to be there. So now uh, I'm taking some of the colorful pages from that book. I thought it'd be nice to have a pop of color. Uh, and again, just thinking about that little tab at the top, I thought how nice to have um, a little bit of detail from that paper that actually was on that tab sticking out. So I'm just lining that up on the piece of paper the way I want it to be, gluing the back, and then sticking that piece of paper down, just holding it up so I can see the light through the background is showing me where I want it to be so I can get it in exactly the right spot for that nice piece of uh, detail to show up on that tab. And once that is stuck in place, I've cut around it, gone back in with my corner rounder to take those edges off the corner and just making sure that that book page is all thoroughly stuck down to the card underneath. And then we need to bring in the Distress Oxides to start to age it. So first of all, just going around with the, uh, the vintage photo, then I've used some tea dye and some bundled sage on, and again, brought in some of those field note stickers. And I want to cover the back as well, so that, because that was the thing, that little piece looked a bit fresh, didn't look old enough, so I've covered the back with some tea dyed paper uh, and just literally just glued it down with my glue stick. So those two elements are now done, the little pocket on the front and the tag on the inside. So I want to turn my attention now to creating that pocket that's going to sit behind that envelope. So again, I've got this kind of new shiny piece of the folio that I want to cover up. So just using my glue stick and sticking down some of that tea dyed paper and cutting off that excess that I'm not gonna need, cutting around the outside edge as well, so that just covers up that shiny bit I don't want, just inking the edges so that that pocket just fits there, like that. And I've literally, um, oh, <laughs> I'm putting a little bit of stamping on as well. But all I'm gonna do is glue the three edges of that pocket there, so a little really tiny bead of glue because I don't want to make that pocket any smaller than it really is. So tiny bead of glue around those three edges and then put that in place so that you can still tuck things in from that front section. And now I'm creating the little card to go in that section. So another off cut. And I really quite liked this, uh, this kind of pink flower here, but I didn't want it to just, just be that. So I'm taking a little bit of the, um, the book pages that just had the, uh, the text on it, and then I'm tearing out the bit of flower that I want, just seeing how that's going to fit on that piece of card. Decided I didn't like that bit of leaf sticking out. It just didn't seem to balance the page very well. 
So I'm inking up those bits of paper before I stick them down, so I want those edges to, to stand out. Sticking that down, glue stick, and just sticking it on the top of that piece of card and then cutting around the edges. And then doing the same with that piece with the flower on. So glue stick, sticking it down, and then getting my scissors and cutting around the edge. Rounding my corners. And now bringing in some of that ink just to add some more aged detail to it. Getting those edges looking nice and aged. Doing the smooshing. You guys are probably bored of watching me doing the smooshing by now. Adding some stamping. And see how that goes in there. Now I want to add a little tab so it's easy to pull it out. So I've just got another one of those little tabs here. I uh, put a sheet of craft paper through my Cricut machine and cut these tabs out in a batch. So I've always got a little box of them. Aging them up, adding some stamping. I like those little details. And then just a little bit of glue. If I can get my, <laughs> my glue flowing freely. And just popping that in place so that it lines up with the uh, the flap of that journal page. You'll see when I pop it in place. There we go. So now I'm looking at the front of this pocket and I had this bit of card left over where I purposefully cut out some little rounds because I needed them for another project and I realised that this would make a pretty cool belly band. So um, I'm trimming this down so that those circles are all in the middle of that piece of card. And then I'm just going to measure it up on that flap there. I'm just trimming it down to size with my craft knife so that it fits as a perfect little belly band there. And I had this idea that I wanted to um, create some little, almost like specimen slides. So I'm just using this bit of packaging from a stencil and trimming that out a little bit so that I can place down that belly band. You'll notice I have done the inking and stamping on that belly band already. I thought you guys had seen me do that enough already. Um, so, I fast forwarded through that bit. So we are just gonna put a little bead of glue. I'm keeping that glue as far away from the edge of those circles as possible because when I place this down on that bit of packaging, you could use acetate, but I've got loads of this packaging, so I thought this would do nicely. So I'm just placing that on that piece of packaging and giving it a very fine little tap so that that glue doesn't squidge in to those circle areas and then just trimming it with my scissors. just checking that that still fits there which it does which is cool so that's going to be a belly band that I can tuck things behind but what I want to do now is put some lovely little images in those circles so I've got some book pages here from some of my vintage books and I'm just kind of auditioning and seeing which ones fit in those little circle spaces um, so that it kind of looks like a little kind of specimen slide so I'm just trimming those out all the ones that are gonna that just fit really nicely giving them a little trim how cool is that it's gonna be so cute when it's finished just need that to fit inside there so I can stick it enough to stick it on the back but not so much that it sticks out so I've found all of the ones that I wanted cut them out and now just putting that little bit of glue around on the, uh, the circle on the back and then I am just hovering that over, getting it in the right place before I tap it down. Again, really gently, I don't want that glue smooshing into the middle. Seeing how that's all come together there. All five of them, it looks really nice with them all together like that. These 
pictures from these old books are just gorgeous. I love how that has come out. I might be doing this again for other projects. So here it is, doesn't it look great? So I just did usual stamping, usual distress inks, and then I've done the same on the back of that flap. I've just used the inks and some stamping, the same as I have on everything else, and then I've attached it at the top and the bottom and shoved things behind it like a belly band. So I'm really pleased with how that's come out and the inside of that flap as well. Now you'll see under my hand there, this, that's what we're gonna be looking at next time, creating that little folder and also filling that space there. So I do hope you'll join me for part four very soon.